Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. Sarah Lee joining us here today, better known as the Money Mentor. Excited to have her here joining us today from beautiful San Francisco. We're going to talk all about Money Mentor, what that is, and of course, how she can help you. It's a financial literacy company, primarily, as you say, targeted towards kids and young adults. Uh, We are excited to learn more about this today. Welcome to the show today. How are you? Thank you so much. I appreciate you having me on. Sarah, please introduce yourself to our listeners today to start. Tell us a little bit about this company. Well, um, I started out my career many, many years ago as an educational psychologist, and Mm -hmm. I got into nonprofit work, started raising money, and eventually became a financial advisor. And Mm -hmm. throughout time, realized that the way that we teach financial literacy maybe could be improved. I think most people in my experience are afraid of money. They're afraid of the terms. They're not really capable of making good buying decisions as a whole because of that. Yeah. And it's not that they don't want to be financially literate. It's that they don't know how. So my husband and I um, came up with this idea. It's from our production company. Yeah. And we basically decided to teach kids and adults through um, cartoons, puppets, games, simulations. And we have a main character. His name is GPB. And uh, he has a podcast. Hey, are you going to show him? Did you want to show us a little bit uh, of him today? I will show you a little bit. I'm going to I'm going to explain him at first. Sure. Um, so GPB is the guinea pig bank. He's a guinea pig bank. So his dad was a <laughs> oh, right? that's so cute. Yeah. Yeah. Was a guinea pig, and I his saw. Mom, <laughs> his dad, I'm sorry, it was a bank, and right, mm-hmm. and then dad was, his mom was a guinea pig. Anyway, the point is, is that he's the mayor of the town, Money Mentorville, mm-hmm. and has characters, friends, rabbits, bears that will um, help teach these financial literacy concepts. Great. Well, to start to get in touch with you, uh, how do we find you? It's money mentor dot passion dot io. Um, yeah, that's, that's one way. That's not the best way I would, I would either go to money mentor, or I should say, right, the website, yep. money or free gift.com. Or I would try texting money mentor to five, five, four, 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 get on our mailing list. That's probably the easiest way to get hold of me. All right. So excited about this because then also we have the Money Mentorville show. Uh, we're going to talk about that. Uh, there's so much to you. So where did you want to start? Let's let's just keep going. So, like I said, I've been teaching financial literacy for 20 years. Um, I started out as an investment banker and a TV host. I actually hosted TV from the time I was nine to 11 um, for a TV station in Wisconsin. Mm-hmm. Tradition. And I actually was part of a program that tested whether kids could produce TV under the age of 15. And we were very successful and become a net, became a national presence. I ended up continuing on with that personally and ended up being a TA and an RA at UCLA in the film school. Mm-hmm. And they don't have those, by the way, but they yeah. made a special exception for me that I would be able to teach, um, like I said, acting at the time and performance. And basically, it just grew into taking my passions for TV, my passions for communication, my passions for psychology, and then my husband works for uh, Lucas Films, Disney. Uh, mm-hmm. So he got involved, and we developed this character one day when we were having fun, saying, "You know, it would be fun if we just taught it this way, right? Then people would really get it." <laughs> yeah, especially kids. I have a six and eight year old. This is great for them. So, uh, GBP, you say, stands for Guinea Pig uh, Piggy Bank, correct? That's yes. what you just yes. showed. And yes. so now uh, in the series, GBP is the mayor of uh, Money Mentorville, right? And the podcaster who mostly talks about life skills and business, which is something um, we as adults sometimes don't know. So it's good to start, you know, teaching children about this at this age. Um, could you talk more? I know it's moneymentorfreegift.com. You can go right there, download the Money Mentor app today for that. We're going to keep reminding you about that as we continue the conversation. Uh, but please, let's learn more about him and, of course, this whole series. Yeah, so so that's the thing. So We basically decided that we wanted, during COVID, to deliver financial literacy 
through a means that was more effective than just myself running around teaching people financial literacy, meaning I'm a national speaker and, and an author, and I'm somewhat of a personality. But the problem is I can't get to enough people fast enough. No matter what I do, I'm not going to be able to do that. COVID was perfect for us because it allowed us the time to, to build out this out. There's about 180 components. There are um, not just representations and not just GPV teaching, but um, there's simulations. So generally speaking, we're teaching a lesson. We have a fun cartoon or a puppet show that kind of gets people into it a forum to see if they're learning and then actually simulations so they can practice what we're teaching them before they actually have to use real money. And just to be clear, that's kind of off the idea of paper trading. So when you first teach someone how to trade traditionally as a professional, you don't teach them how to do it with real money. You teach them how to do it with paper. Like and they monopoly money, as we say. Yes. Now, so you the less risky way to learn. Got it. Now, again, you mentioned you were in the television business and you hosted a show, uh, right? I uh, call kids. It's kids for TV. That was, um, gosh, as a kid. So you were a host back in the day and you said the station out there is still operational. So it's yeah. kids for TV. And tell me exactly what you developed uh, then as well. And that's really what got you started in media. That's what got me started in media because people will say, oh, you seem like such a natural. Like I've been doing this since I was nine. <laughs> so I hope so. Now, that being said, um, it was actually my brother's idea. We had a local nonprofit. My dad was a city councilman. My mom was a commercial real estate developer. They had actually taught us, funny enough, about communication and presence and those things. We knew a lot about government and business, even as kids, which sounds funny. And my brother got this idea to try out for this kids TV program. I went along as little sister and for, to the audition and- <laughs> Who knew? And you landed the job. So did your brother not get it or was he part of it too? <laughs> and I feel terrible about it to this day because he works as an engineer actually with lighting design, custom lighting design for movies and films. So he still kind of kept the bug, but behind the scenes. Um, but yeah, no, I feel bad about that. <laughs> oh, but not too bad. You got the show. It's okay. Right. And yes. uh, let me ask now, continue on your journey here, um, you know, through college. Would you mind sharing yeah, how you got here? And then we'll talk more about you, your husband, how you combined this whole concept. Yeah. So long story short, my dad also was a writer. And when I got the audition, I originally as a kid did the news. So I was a newscaster at first doing mm -hmm. local it's just like any other local news station. And then eventually we did telethons, 24 hour telethons. And eventually after that, I was given my own show and my option to produce that was whatever I wanted to do, like mm -hmm. regular TV. And um, I decided to do a show interviewing business owners. Mm -hmm. as an So if people want to know, were you always this way? Yes, I was always this way. <laughs> I was always this exact way. And why did a nine-year-old think interviewing business owners was a good idea. Literally, I have no idea except for what I just told you, which is my parents always had people coming through the house. We did a lot of civic things. And I somehow thought that that was a clever idea to support the community. And um, we lived in a town, by the way, that had um, like um, a groundhog. Right? So do we. We have Holtzville Howl all in Long Island. Who, what's the groundhog's name? I don't remember anymore. It was so long ago. <laughs> what, 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 what town were you from? What city? Sun Prairie, Wisconsin. Okay. Okay. It's outside of Madison. So the point I'm making is that we have this groundhog and I think GPP kind of represents him indirectly. He looks like him. Aww. So fast forward, I mean, we're going to talk more also about your national book tour, everything that's coming up. So here you are as, as, as a child, you're a success with this show, and then you honed it on what uh, career path, and then how did it come into, um, you know, you becoming an author? So I started writing back when I was young. I spent a lot of time in Wisconsin by myself because we were somewhat on the edge of town. So we didn't have a lot of extra kids. So I entertained myself with comic books and books and whatnot. And um, my dad was an author, as I mentioned. So I thought it was a good idea to continue to write. When I eventually got to UCLA, um, and I have quite a bit of education past that, but when I eventually got to UCLA, I took the screenwriting program at the Extension School in addition to my 
three majors. <laughs> so oh, I studied yes. psychology. I studied non-Western art history. And then I also was dabbling with uh, studio art. So in there somewhere, I was also studying political science before that and switch majors, right? Which we all do. But if you kind of understand that as a humanitarian, I look at things as why doesn't something work, right? Mm -hmm. Why does it work? It should work. And yeah. so I feel like money mentors and innovation in financial services, just as a heads up, because as a financial services professional, you're not really allowed to teach much about money in the public because you're liable for the advice you give. And wow. so teaching kids these words and making them not afraid of the concepts um, will make it less mysterious, I think, over time. And we might actually cure financial illiteracy, which affects about 5.5 billion people. In fact, it's most people on this planet. Wow. Wow. You don't realize that. And so you're obviously raising awareness for this. Now, tell me, what's the name of the book? So the we're, the, we have a four book series. series. Mm -hmm. yeah, there's two of them. And the first book series is the book of influence. Mm -hmm. And it's based off Dale Carnegie's work, How to Win Friends and Influence People. And so it's basically just a group of us, a lot of professionals, um, some notable people. Alex Swanson, Alex Stern, I was reading before. Mm -hmm. Yes, giving our take on this subject. And it, it basically goes into several ideas, but likability factor, communication, and various other topics where we're giving our opinion on how we've been successful in our careers and how some of these lessons can be borrowed. Great. And this series now, you're doing the National Book Tour. Did it start yet? No, the first book is just about to come out the end of the month. It's a physical book. It'll be out in Barnes & Noble. And then the book tour usually will involve Barnes & Noble and then so there several other bookstores. So it's a physical book series. Mm -hmm. um, there are people like Brian Tracy. Brian Tracy is one of my heroes. Oh, yeah. And... Mm -hmm. um, Brian Tracy is the inventor of consultative selling. So he did that about 40 years ago. And that's actually where I learned it, by the way, because my mom taught me his work when I was a kid because I was on TV. <laughs> and so it's kind of funny that it all comes full circle. Now. Amazing that you got to work together like that. Now, on top of it all, besides this book series, you have your own book coming out or is it already out? We, we, I have <laughs> several other books. <laughs> that oh my goodness. Heard of. We have a second series called The Book of Mentors, which is us examining four other authors' works. Um, Zig Ziglar, Jim Rohn are two of the authors, and we're giving our, again, our take on their work. And then I also have another book coming out called Rock Soup, yes. which is my business philosophy. And I can give you the short version of Rock Soup, which, which is, it's an old folk tale. I thought everyone knew this folk tale. I never realized that it was something unusual, but basically the concept is that there was a poor town and everyone's starving and they're looking for leadership. And some stranger comes in and then says, I know how to feed everyone. And they said, great, how do you do it? And they're like, all I need is a big cauldron and a rock and a bunch of water in the middle of the town and just leave me alone. Just let me do my thing. And so curious people come and say, hey, what are you doing? I'm making rock soup. And they're like, great, I have some extra carrots. I have some extra, <laughs> right, potatoes. I'll go run and get them. They dump them in. They say, let me know. It smells really good. Let me know when it's done. That's my idea of business in general, is that if everyone puts in what they have extra, if they learn to be a community, they understand the impact that they can have. It's really profound and we can get someplace because the resources were already there. Yeah. The resources were already there. What they didn't have is someone to come and say, hey, I'm the Pied Piper, right? I'm the leader. I'm the person to say, hey, you already have all this. Let's just bring it together and put it together in a an attractive package and there's enough food for everybody amazing and on top of it all now the tv show when did you develop the tv show yeah so over time i've dilly dallied in tv um produced some tv we produced some cartoons my husband and i with money mentor productions and Clee productions which is my husband's individual company and um that was why we knew this would work that's why we knew we could make a gpb <laughs> uh-huh friends because we've done it in the past and put this on tv for other shows um but yes he he's he's actually quite wonderful in the sense that he he likes to be shy and behind the scenes but 
he's been part of at least three or four or five Academy Award winning teams, meaning he works mostly Marvel movies, but he's worked on movies like Harry Potter, Transformers, Terminator, Star Wars, you name it. So he's got quite the background in visual effects. And um, he also likes to write. So that's part of it too, is that we we sort of have fun doing this anyway. You know. Yeah. The, so where can we find, uh, now you keep talking about Money Mentor, this TV series, where can we find it? Tell us. Uh, and again, let's talk more about it. I know you're here to teach those for financial literacy. So give us some examples of it uh, and you know the things we are teaching and how it works. Yeah, let's see if I can actually share my screen for a second and sure. see if I can pull something up. See if this will this will work. It's a little bit simplistic, but this will give you the okay. idea. Okay. Sure. No, absolutely. It's great to see. Seeing is believing. And if you're just on the podcast, not on the Zoom cast today, uh, we're going to remind you, um, you could text Money Mentor to 55444, text Money Mentor to 55444. For, and do me a favor, tell me the website one more time. Um, for moneymentorfreegift.com would be a great place to start. Or you can do um, Bitly Money Mentor Podcast or Money Mentor Free Gift. There's a whole bunch of ways to get a hold of me. All right, great. And here we go. Sheesh. Sorry about that. That's okay. There we go. Let's try this. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Blue ones, calm down. Gotta call my boy Bear. Go for Bear. Hey, Bear. Me, Rabbit. Hey, I got this problem. Lay it out for me, Rabbit. What's going on? In the mail, I got this thing that says I gotta pay back my student loan. Anything about this, Bear? When you took the loans out, they explained to you that you had to pay them back, right? Oh, I'm sorry, what? Awesome. You want to show another? Bobby, how's your weekly savings going? I'm trying to save half my weekly allowance, but saving is hard. How my bank's too fast. Kitty Piggy Bank, what's gotten into you? Why are you moving around so fast? You know me, I'm multitasking. I'm teaching about savings and getting my steps in at the same time. I work really hard and going really fast, okay? No. Adorable. Well, this is great Little conversation. Because, my boy bear. It's okay. You, uh, I have a six and eight year old, and my oldest, I'm teaching him about hey, what a mortgage is. Now he's got to pay it back. Oh, hold on. on. I still hear the audio. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, right? I'm sorry, what? I hear it, but I'm not seeing it now. Now I don't hear you. The fun of live TV. I know. So that's great. I'm trying to teach my son. He just taught him about a mortgage and what it is. He didn't understand the concept. Um, and he's eight. And the whole thing with a credit card. Well, I'm like, I can't wait to get a credit card. I said, no, you have to pay that back. He's like, what do you mean? I said, not only do you have to pay it back, you're paying back more of it because you're borrowing and you're and his eyes were like, what? So I don't want a credit card. I said, exactly. So we need to learn to save. All you want to do is buy, 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 buy on Amazon. But that Christmas money I'm putting in the bank. You could take a little, but it's so valuable to, to, to teach your child at a young age the importance of savings. Yes. It's, it's actually, it's more, it's more simple than that and more complex both. Meaning what you just said is perfect. Most kids can actually get on an app, right? They can use money. Um, As little kids, three years old, four years old, they're already like, I know how to do an in-app purchase. But do they understand what money is? No. No, nope. they think <laughs> it grows on trees, yes. So to your point, to teach what interest rates are, to teach the rule of 72, right? To teach that you have to pay the money back, to teach some what some of the words mean, it's really a big deal. And like you said, that's a great story because your son is illustrating the perfect point. And the part that I hate to say, but is also true, is that most adults don't understand it either. And there's a lot of shame around this issue because people say, what well, I make money. Yeah. And, educated, and so they don't want to 
<laughs> explain to another adult that they don't really a lot of times know the impact of interest rates, like you just said, or how a credit card really works or how to build proper credit. Mm -hmm. It's so true. So now let's talk about the app that you have um, now. And, and again, I uh, text money mentor to five, five, four, 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 money mentor to five, five, uh, four, four, four. Remind us about the app and how we can get that. That's, we'll send you the app link if you send us that. That's part of the free gift. Perfect. And tell us more about the benefits of this free gift and uh, why this is so exciting to you. Yes. So like I said, I, I've been a investment banker. I've taught business. I have an MBA myself, right? I have almost a PhD in educational psychology. I didn't understand money, my own money, until I started teaching this. And I taught reading before I taught financial literacy. And what I learned about teaching reading, by the way, is it's not about the reading. So I'll tell you a quick story, quick story. The, one of these boys that I used to go <laughs> and he, this is the one thing that I really, really learned is he was very smart, stopped doing his homework and started getting straight Bs. And I said, what is happening? Because I was as a tutor, you're smart enough. And eventually what he said was, it doesn't matter. I'm never leaving here. And I was going into the projects and wants yeah. LA to teach. And he goes, what, you know, now he was like, again, nine. So this age of nine, by the way, is important in the sense that <laughs> nine helped develop me into how I am. Nine also broke his little spirit because he's sitting there saying, look at Ralph, I'm never leaving here. So what is the point of studying? I mm -hmm. had and how much literacy had to do with hope. And so I consider myself sort of a hope dealer. In fact, I think I own hopedealer.com. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Yeah, but that's what it is. I think it's just hope. I mean, teaching people about money, you can't go on a money diet. You can't sit there and say, hey, look, I'm not going to really learn about money because I don't need this information. What are you talking about? We all need this information. Yes. And we don't teach this in schools. Mm -hmm. So someone, you know, right? Someone's got to do it. Well, it's amazing that you're here helping us. And remind our listeners and viewers today how we can reach out to you, please. Yes. So one way to reach out to us is go to moneymentorfreegift.com and put your name in the email list and we will send you out the app link or text money mentor, M O N E Y. And by the way, I'm super dyslexic, so that's fun. M E N T O R 255444. And we'll put you on the mailing list and also send out the link. We'll also send out the links for the TV shows, the books, and everything else. Great. Also, Sara Lee, pleasure to have you here. And uh, again, it's not just for kids, adults, we're learning with this. And it's really cool. I love seeing your animated series, and uh, we'll check more of it out as well. Don't forget, guys, text Money Mentor to 55444. And uh, looking forward to our next conversation with Sara Lee. Have a fantastic day. Thank you again for being here. Are you looking for even more of the podcasts and hosts that you love? The Podcast Business News Network is proud to announce that you now have even more ways to listen live. Check out the MyTuner Radio, Online Radio Box, and Simple Radio apps on iOS and Android, or find us online. Search for Business News Network on MyTuner-Radio.com, or search Podcast Business News Network on Streama.com and OnlineRadioBox.com slash US. Take your podcast on the go and don't miss a minute of the action. Broadcasting from the business capital of the world, this is the Podcast Business News Network. For nearly 2,000 severely injured veterans, everyday life has become filled with barriers. Day-to-day -day simple tasks can become pretty daunting. I have to carry my chair up two flights of steps or have somebody do it for me. What scares me the most is just the falling. When I'm struggling with my house, I think, you know, to have that one great barrier just knocked down, I mean, it's... It's crucial. Home for Our Troops is a wonderful nonprofit that builds a mortgage free, fully adaptive, handicap accessible house, and there's no catch. It'll be our very first home that we've ever owned. This is a game changer. This is where your life begins again. We need you to join us in completing this important mission. Please visit HFOTUSA.org and help build homes and rebuild lives. Because of you, everything's it's going to be okay.